got my DNA test back today. And it says I'm most notably connected, or my DNA is most notably connected to Chief Pontiac of the Ottawa Indians, or Native Americans. That blew my mind. And I was born in Korea, lived on the streets of South Korea. But there's not much Korean in me. <laughs> How is that even possible? So I'm a Korean from Korea that's not Korean, that's most notably connected to Chief Pontiac. How is that even possible? Someone explain this. This is Jeremiah 12 and 9. My inheritance is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field. Come to devour. Shalom, Kahala, Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Kapodash. Double R's my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect who the house of David reborn again in this generation. And shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage, we were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to go into Israelite foreigners. And I wanted to show this video that which gives a perfect example how there's going to be Israelites coming out of every nation upon the face of the earth, right? And like it tells us here in the scriptures that when it says mine heritage, this is the most high speaking, okay? The father whose true Hebrew name is Yahweh, which is Hebrew for he is, right? So, so what Yahweh is saying is that his heritage, his chosen people, which would again would be the lineage of people that he has chosen all the way from Adam all the way down to Jacob who his name was ch changed to Israel okay that would be the heritage of God right the chosen lineage and it says my heritage is unto me as a speckled bird the speckled bird refers to how we are of every color right every flavor right Israelites are going to be found within every one of the 197 UN recognized nations upon the face of the earth today okay and why is this well because you know throughout history like this man who or says that he was born in Korea where did how did how did the seed of Israel which used to be in the land of ancient Israel you know go east well when we go into the Bible timeline there was something known as the Silk Road okay and the Silk Road was a, an established route for a very long time. It started in about 114 BC, which was about 100 years before the Messiah would come on the scene, okay, all the way to about 1415. Okay, this is about the time when uh, uh, Edom had taken over and the Renaissance was under underway. Now, ultimately, the Silk Road, not only did it deal in spices, animals, but it also dealt in slavery. And when you understand that, when you look at what took place before that, let's go back in time, right? You have the Maccabees, right? We, which remember, some Israelites got sent into slavery then. But besides that, if you go back even further, let's go back. There we go. You had the Babylonian captivity, which took place from 597 to 586 BC. Right? This is of the southern kingdom. All right? So you, you know a lot of Babylonian uh, people had sold Israelites that they had taken captives into slavery. And the Silk Road was the vessel, I guess, at the time. Right? It was the highway of traffic and, and commerce back in, the, in these days. And before that, you also had, had the northern kingdom go into slavery. Okay? So... When you think about this, like when you when you read stories about the Israelites, and by the way, that Gadite who lives in Korea, 
right? The guy in the beginning of this video, his seed line that he goes back to, because again, he would go back to the, the, the tribe of Gad, which would be today known as the Native American Indians, which is why he said he's most closest related to the Ottawa Indians. Well, that seed line for the Northern Kingdom of Israel, which would be the Latinos and Native Americans, that started to be spread out, you know, largely after the capture, which took place at 720 BC. And this is where you hear stories about Tobit, where he was living in like Iran, right? Or Persia at the time in the story. So you see, there are many events that took place which led to the true Israelites, the Negro Latino Native Americans, and anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, right? Like this Korean man, right? He didn't know he's an Israelite, but he found out. And what does the Bible tell us about that? This is Zechariah 10, and I'm going to start at 7. And they of Ephraim, Ephraim being the Northern Kingdom, the Latinos and Native Americans, shall be like a mighty man and their heart shall rejoice as though as through wine yea their children shall see it and be glad and their heart shall rejoice in yahweh i will hiss for them and gather them and i and i have redeemed them and they shall increase as they have increased and here's the point and i will sow them amongst the people and they shall remember me in far countries and they shall live with their children and turn again right this right here specifically is ta talking about the northern kingdom israelite foreigners again those people just like this man who come from the lineage of those of the of the northern tribes okay and when you look at the lineage of israel right this would be you know, the four wives of, of Jacob, right, Israel. And in this case, so he said he was most closely related to like the North American Indians, right? The Ottawa Indians. Well, the, the Indians, the North American Indians come from Gad, okay? And Gad goes back to Zipla, okay? Making them one of the 12 tribes of Israelites. So these would be the Israelite foreigners. Okay, and this is where a lot of people get things confused because through false religion and false teachings, the term Gentiles in the Bible has always been taught as meaning everybody in the world. Well, there's different words for the, the word Gentile, right? And here's a perfect example of this. The, the beloved elder Malcolm from Chicago um, shared this with, with us, right? He showed how in the Plutarch's Bible Dictionary from 1925, that when you look up the word Hellenist, which is the word found for Greek, which the church teaches, that means everybody else in the world, right? The Gentiles, that that word, um, really when you look up to it, look into it, excuse me, it actually means these are the Israelites that fell away during these captivities, or, you know, just through migration, they moved to other places like a perfect example would be the Israelites in the book of Ruth that went out to the land of Moab, dwelt there amongst the, the Moabites. You know, one of them married Ruth and then they unfortunately passed away. But that story went on to uh, to to show that she was going to be the, the grandmother of the coming, uh, you know, King David. OK, but, you know, that's besides the point. That, but that just shows how Israelites, we were already being scattered around the world. But let me just read this de this uh, definition. It says Hellenist, right? Which is the word for Greek, right? It says one, not of the Greek nation who spoke Greek, right? The term is used specifically of Jews in whatever part of the world they lived. It says who had Greek practices and opinions and it says they the text calls them Grecian Jews. Okay? So that there you go. So this right here is the true understanding of what the Israelite foreigners or the net the the Gentiles would be, right? Um, cuz again, there's two Gentiles. There's the natural Gentiles which 
would be the other 17 nations upon the face of the earth. Because again, there's 18 nations and the other nations will be considered Gentile or heathens. And then the other type of Gentile would be the Israelites that fell away and, and started to live like the other 17 nations or they you know, forgot that they were Israelites and believed that they were Korean, right? And then later on, it gets revealed onto them who they really are. And then, well, these are the Gentiles that will be reawoken. These are, um, like it tells us here, this is the seed of Ephraim who has grown, right? Um, he'll be like a mighty man, meaning that we're gonna, the Northern Kingdom's gonna grow in expanse. And it says that um, their children shall see it and be glad. This means that now us in this generation, we are the children of, of the other Northern Kingdoms that came before us, right? Really, we were, we were them, but we're considered their children. They were considered our fathers, right? In the Bible, that's how it explains it. We would see this prophecy come to pass, and that's what we're seeing now, right? We're seeing how the Lord, He has sown the seed, right? I will sow them amongst the people, meaning that the Lord was going to ultimately uh, scatter the Israelites. And that's exactly what he did. And how did he do that? Well, it's by, by war, right? The, the Bible does say the Lord is a Lord of war, okay? And by doing this, the Lord was able to spread the seed, right? Spread, you know, sow the seed of Israel throughout all the world and throughout all the other 17 nations. Okay, so you had in this case here, he looks like a Judite, right? Or and he ultimately more likely went here. This seems like it's like it's Korea, right? He probably fought in the Korean War, and they ultimately had a baby. And this baby looks kind of Korean, but probably a little darker. And this baby would eventually, if this is a, a boy, would go on and maybe marry another Korean woman, and that Korean would go on and look like this man and eventually that phenotype of your dna that would harken back to in his this man's case an indian looking israelite right would uh or even darker indian looking israelite would eventually go away and you would get what this man looks like right hence the speckled bird analogy that the lord put in the scripture describing what the israelites would look like towards the end let me read this this is Genesis 22 and 18. It says, And the angel of Yahweh Bashimashai called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that is ble that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And here's the point. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Okay. And this here is the blessing that the Lord gave unto our forefather Abraham and the point where he says in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed this is twofold okay because the way that the earth is all the inhabitants of the earth the other 17 nations well excuse me the other 16 nations because Edom uh, the so-called Caucasian race um, they're eventually after a thousand years of captivity are going to be done away with but the other 16 nations that remain the other Gentiles they're gonna be blessed by living on a planet run righteously it's gonna be in a heaven-like state it's gonna be a beautiful futuristic utopia okay what everybody wants right where there's no no famine there's nothing for want yes there's gonna be jobs you know for for the other nations but it's gonna be in a state where as we've seen a preview in King Solomon's kingdom that even the servants were, were decked out, right? As witnessed by the Queen of Sheba, showing that when the righteous are in rulership, everybody gets a, a good deal.
But again, I digress back to this. So besides the, the world eventually being blessed by the Israelites in rulership, right? The seed of Abraham in rulership, there, these other nations are gonna be blessed too because the Lord is gonna sow the seed of Israel within these nations. So a man like this, who looks like, Kore like a Korean, I bet you in his heart, he believes he is a Korean. His customs, his culture, his language, his family, right? Wait, who he considers family? These are of the seed of Moab, right? Because when you get into Korean uh, background, they're basically Chinese that were conquered by Japanese, right? So um, the point being is that Koreans, they're Moabites. So just like in the book of Ruth, right, where you had Israelites going into the land of Moab, having children, and this man here is an example of this, okay? And this right here is how the, the nations are going to be blessed because you're going to have Israelites who are going to be Korean, right? That are going to look like Korean, but through their father lineage, they go back to an Israelite, right? And that means that this man is going to have the best interest of his country in mind. He's going to bring whatever inventions, whatever trait that this man has as an Israelite, he's going to bring it to this the people around him in the country he's in. And this is how the, that blessing goes. Let's go and get this and then we'll be out of here. This is Revelations 7 and 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And this here is ultimately talking about when the Lord finally chooses the one-third of Israel, that's one out of every three Negro, Latino, Native Americans, and anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, those vast majority of Israelites, right, the, the one-third of, of humanity, are going to be, out of that group, one-third of that group is going to be saved. So this scripture here shows that the Israelites are not going to be all black, are not going to be all brown, but that they're going to be a mixed multitude or a speckled bird. Okay, so either way, Akim, thought this was interesting. If this man ever watches this video, that's why your father's lineage goes back to North American Indian is because one, the Israelite seed was a scattered seed amongst the world. And in this case, it looks like a Gadite seed fell in uh, Korea. So uh, next time, I want to give all our glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshai, Bashem, Rukakwadash, Shalom.